On the 22nd day of October, Halloween gave to me. 22 Detectives Thrilling, 21 Wiener Stretching, 20 Zombies Climbing, 19 Richards Cheesing, 18 Undead Trains, 17 Morticians Regaling, 16 Vincents Cracking, 15 Lees Counting, 14 Brides Abiding, 13 Carfax Abbeys, 12 Fathers Stripping, 11 Au Pairs Drowning, 10 Children Creeping, 9 Roddy Seizing, 8 Snowy Mazes, 7 Vacants Digging, 6 Doorways Bending, 5 Children Yelling, 4 Zombie Bulls, 3 Haunted Mirrors, 2 Monster Houses, and a Fog that makes it hard to see. Good morning, everybody, and happy Tuesday. No, Thursday. Jesus Christ. Happy Thursday, October 22nd. Oh, me losing the days uh, like an old man. Uh, It is uh, Thursday, October 22nd, the 22nd day of our 31 days of Halloween, and we are uh, finishing up a little detour into Zombieland, not with the movie Zombieland, but with one of my personal favorites, and, and I think kind of I don't know, it, you know, it's hard to tell outside the bubble you live in, you know, but I feel like this is a movie that has become beloved, even though at one time uh, it, it was seen as somewhat obscure, and, and that of course is Night of the Creeps, it is written and directed by Fred Decker, who had previously done The Monster Squad, uh, would go on to direct Robocop 3, and then not much else. Uh, did a Tales from the Crypt episode, and uh, I think I saw that he's got a short uh, that is wrapping up production this year, but, I mean, who knows what that means uh, in, in the world in which we live now. But it it always surprised me that Fred Decker didn't direct more movies. Like, RoboCop 3 was a stinker, uh, but I don't know that that was Fred Decker's fault. You know, he made a comic book movie, uh, pre- but, you know, where there were no comic book movies before, like... RoboCop was uh, the original uh, Verhoeven film. is much more, you know, social satire, and it's aggressively violent. And uh, what Fred Decker did with RoboCop 3 was a little more, you know, family-friendly and and that kind of thing. Like, it was the director of the Monster Squad doing a RoboCop movie. And uh, and anyway, uh, we will not litigate RoboCop 3 here uh, today, ladies and gentlemen. Instead... We will talk about Night of the Creeps, uh, which, uh, as I said, is, is sort of a favorite of mine. And, and kind of when I was thinking of w- what I wanted to wrap up this uh, run of zombie movies with, um, it was pretty. <laughs> it was a pretty easy decision to say, like, eh, how about we watch Night of the Creeps again? Um, I see this movie a lot, and uh, uh, but here's why I would recommend including it on your list if you haven't seen it in a while or if you've never seen it. If nothing else, Night of the Creeps is an amazing curiosity in that it was one of the first movies to be really self-referential um, in a way that was uh, kind of front and center, you know? Um, all the characters are named after horror directors, a, a, a thing I stole for Lost After Dark because I love uh, Night of the Creeps so much. I was like, well, if Fred Decker can do it, I can do it. Uh, <laughs> so I stole that trick and that's where I got it. Uh, if you ever want to know some some hot take Randstall trivia, uh, the the fact that all the characters in Lost After Dark are named after uh, horror directors uh, and and Final Girls is because of uh, Fred Decker and Night of the Creeps. So uh, I have this emotional attachment to it. I, when I was a kid, I watched it a lot because it was sort of every horror movie all at once, and that that's what I mean about it being self referential. Because at the beginning, it kind of apes. Uh, the blo- well, at the very beginning, it's just a crazy alien movie, but when, when it, we get to Earth, and, and that's one thing I always forget about Night of the Creeps, like, oh yeah, it doesn't start on Earth, it starts on a spaceship, uh, <laughs> but once you get to Earth, it kind of apes the blob and that 50s teenagers versus monster kind of movie, but then it becomes more of a zombie film. And then becomes an alien movie again. And uh, I like that it's all over the place. I like that it has these moves. And, you know, and, and the, the self-referential part is that Fred Decker understands that he is moving through those genres and playing with those genres. Like, there's a five-minute piece of the film that just becomes a slasher movie. You know, when uh, when Tom Atkins is going after uh, the... the you know, now zombified serial killer that killed his would-be girlfriend. 
Um, so that stuff is all pretty amazing. Uh, and I like it a lot. I, I think it's playful. I think it's fun. I think it works. Um, I also think that the characters are out uh, with, with some exceptions are outstanding. I think the biggest exception is I don't think the female lead is terribly strong. You know, she just kind of bounces from guy to guy in the movie, and that's a little bit disappointing, but it's also the 80s, and that's, you know, that's kind of what you did with the girl. Um, but it is a little unfortunate. That said, the relationship between the two leads, uh, Chris and JC, um, JC for either Jesus Christ or John Carpenter, you be the pick. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think I know where I lead. Um, their relationship is great. They're, you know... Again, being a kid in the 80s, it was a relationship I was familiar with on screen. You know, it is the the two lovable losers who, in the beginning, are a bit at, at odds with one another. But, you know, they uh, where, uh, when they rub up against the, the frat boys and things like that, it's clear we're on their side. Because they're picked on, they're the underdogs, um, and they're funny. You know, they're smarter and, and more clever than the dumb frat guys. Um, you know, there's a hint of that Revenge of the Nerds kind of kind of style, uh, snobs versus slobs sort of thing, and uh, the fact that JC is handicapped in the uh, in the film is never made to. I mean, it's central to his character in the sense that they talk about it, but I also like the way that they talk about it. You know, that it's not. He he makes fun of himself a little bit. He is he uh, J C is a little disarming about it, and you know it. At a certain point in the film, it just doesn't become an issue anymore. And it was interesting to see, even as a kid, that represent uh, that representation in film of someone who's handicapped but not, uh, but 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 not compromised in terms of how they're going about their life. Even though he makes a point, he's like, look, I'm probably never going to get the girl, you know, that's not, that's not the life I got. And, and what makes his character so heartbreaking is that not only is he the guy that's like, Hey, I'm not going to get the girl. He's like, I'm going to help you get the girl because you're my friend. And that, and that's sort of the selfless sort of love he has for, for his buddy. And so, at you know, spoilers for <laughs> this 34 year old movie now, Jesus, um, you know, so when when JC finally meets his demise, uh, there's this really like tear jerking moment where he talks about like, oh, I could walk, you know, even though I was possessed by these alien slugs. Like the the crazy thing was, I could get up and walk. Uh, and and by the way, JC has the good sense to destroy himself in a way that will make sure that he does not infect anyone else. Uh, he has a great hero's death in that in that film, even though it happens off screen. Um, which brings us to talk about Tom Atkins and I like Tom Atkins in a lot of movies. We started with the fog. If you'll recall, uh, 22 days ago and Tom Atkins is great in that. He's got a much smaller part of course, but he, uh, he's this very natural kind of actor. Um, and I'm thinking of him in the fog now saying things like, you know, ah, it's always different. And you know, how much for this one? You know, when he's going through the, the pad of art. And he's good in that, um, but, like, Night of the Creeps is the Tom Atkins movie. It is the reason that Jamie, uh, Jamie Sammons now, um, will say things like, Jamie Sammons now, Jesus Christ, she's been married forever, and, uh, I just knew her when, people. I was there on the ground floor. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, when, when we talk about him as Tom freaking Atkins... This is why he is amazing in this movie. He is not only does he deliver a good performance, which is true. It's just such a well-written character for him. There is uh, a moment in the movie that is uh, in many ways a defining moment for my both my sense of humor and kind of what I like in movies. And it's it's when uh, Tom Atkins is drinking hard after believing that uh, perhaps this serial killer that he killed lo these many years ago has returned. So he's telling Chris, the uh, the Jason Lively character, um, all about this. And about how he killed someone uh, back when he was a rookie cop. And as he's telling the story, at one point Jason Lively 
I, he kind of poses this rhetorical question, like, you want to know what happened next, Spanky? Because he calls him Spanky. Uh, and, and Jason Lively is like, are you sure you should be telling me this? And Tom Atkins' response is, wrong. I buried him. And it's that moment where you realize, A, he was never listening to Jason Lively. No matter what he was saying, Like he's just bouncing this off of him. And the other thing is that he is perilously close to a breakdown. We see him on uh, at least two occasions preparing for suicide. Like, this is a detective well at the end of his rope. And so at the end of the movie, when when uh, we see his moment of sacrifice, um, it's really rewarding and kind of wonderful. And, you know, Jason Rhodes here on uh, the Legion Podcast Network, Movie Misfits, uh, now available. Um, you know, he'll uh, he'll talk about how, uh, how great Thrill Me is. You know, in fact, uh, as part of their Halloween special, I remember... It was ironic because I was listening to that and I heard Thrill Me. I was like, ah, I'm about to watch Night of the Creeps. Um... You know, it, it, there are all these little catchphrases and great moments, and and it and it's just funny. It's a funny movie, but it's one of those things. Like uh, I was watching Shaun of the Dead recently, and I remember like describing it to someone. I'm like, it's it's funny, but it's still a zombie movie. You know, it's just a funny zombie movie, and that's how Night of the Creeps is. Like it's still a zombie movie, and it's still a monster movie, and it's still like. It is a horror movie first and foremost, but it's it's a funny horror movie filled with really good performances and and a really knowing kind of winking uh, ride through the genre. Um, and and I'll I'll finish my love affair with Night of the Creeps by saying uh, I watched uh, my Blu-ray of it, which has the original ending. I, I think it's got the television ending as well, but. The original ending, of course, uh, was uh, the, the one most people are familiar with is the dog looking up and opening its mouth and a slug comes out. And it's like, oh, it's, you know, the scary dog is possessed. Um, in the director's cut, uh, the original cut of the film, Tom Atkins smoking, the corpse smoking comes out of the ruins of the explosion and makes his way to a graveyard. Uh, where he collapses and, and assumedly uh, spreads slugs into this graveyard. And meanwhile, uh, a, a UFO passes overhead trying to find signs of these slugs. And one, I always imagine like, well, the sequel to that then is maybe aliens and people working together to stop these things. Like there, there's a movie that I think I don't ne- necessarily want to see, but I like the idea of it. Uh, so anyway, Night of the Creeps is a wonderful movie. Um, as we lean into the back end of our, uh, 31 days of Halloween, it's, uh, it's, it's super fun to, uh, visit one of my favorites and, uh, and wrap up our zombie stuff with, uh, maybe my personal favorite. I mean, is it a zombie movie? I think so. There are zombies in it. <laughs> um, you know, they're alien inspired, but hey, so was Night of the Living Dead in theory. Uh, that was all the satellite that exploded and whatnot. Um, anyway, enjoy Night of the Creeps if you haven't in a while. I adore it. Uh, and that's going to do it for our 22nd film on our list. Uh, but uh, come back tomorrow, which is Friday. Can you believe it? Uh, come back tomorrow and we are going to uh, break down the 23rd uh, film on our list of 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, as always, you can drop me a line and let me know what you're watching, what you're thinking, how uh, how life is going over at bo b o at legionpodcasts dot com. Uh, and uh, until then, folks, uh, have yourselves a very spooky uh, Thursday here, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>